lab supported case based surveillance for diphtheria pertussis and neonatal tetanus utilizes a common case investigation form case investigation form or cif is an important document to get the epidemiological data on the disease evidence generated by this data helps in development of strategies for prevention control and elimination of the disease CIF has to be filled for all the cases fulfilling the case definition criteria for the disease as mentioned in coming slides. Diphtheria is an illness of upper respiratory tract categorized by laryngitis or pharyngitis or nasopharyngitis or tonsillitis and adherent membranes on tonsils, pharynx and or nose. Date of onset for diphtheria is the date of onset of sore throat. A case of pertussis is a person of any age with a cough lasting two weeks or more and having paroxysm of cough or inspiratory whoop or post tussive vomiting or apnea or if a clinician suspects pertussis. Date of onset for pertussis is the date of onset of cough. A neonatal tetanus case is any neonate who could suck and cry normally during the first two days of life and who between 3 and 28 days of age cannot suck normally and become stiff or has convulsions or spasms or both. Or any neonate who died of an unknown cause during the first month of life. Date of onset for neonatal tetanus is the date of onset of inability to suck. Let's now learn how to fill the form through a pertussis case study. Here is the reported case study. You can pause the video and go through it. Investigate the case within 48 hours of notification. First section is on notification and investigation information. This section is important to understand the sensitivity of surveillance system to detect the case early and to investigate the case within 48 hours of notification. And circle PTS since this is a case of pertussis. The case was notified on 15th April and was investigated on 16th April. Health facility type and setup help in assessing the health seeking behavior of the community and guides further fine tuning of the network. Date of birth, address, and mobile number should be filled correctly. Case identification details are important to trace the case for epidemiological investigation and for public health interventions. There is no history of hospitalization in this case. Vaccination status is important to understand the level of protection that is there for the diseases. Encircle the vaccine doses received by the case along with the source of vaccination status. Date of last dose of diphtheria and pertussis containing vaccine should be entered. In NNT cases, check the tetanus vaccination status of mother during last pregnancy. Section 5 is on clinical symptoms for all three diseases that is diphtheria, pertussis and neonatal tetanus. Note that the date of onset for diphtheria is sore throat cough for pertussis and inability to suck for neonatal tetanus. In this case, date of onset of cough is 28 March and duration of illness from onset of cough to notification is 18 days. Encircle yes for cough more than 2 weeks 
paroxysm, whoop, apnea and clinician suspicion of pertussis and wrist as no. Similarly, in cases of diphtheria or neonatal tetanus, encircle the symptoms based on history. Always remember that date of onset is the most important date in disease epidemiology and must be elicited correctly. Patient received antibiotics before the specimen collection. In diphtheria case, check for diphtheria antitoxin and its dose given to the patient. Depending on the disease severity, dose of diphtheria antitoxin can be 20,000 to 1 lakh IU. Mention the reason if it has not been given. The suspected case has no history of contact with the laboratory confirmed case. Also, there are no persons in the household or neighborhood having similar symptoms. From patient or caregivers get details about any similar case among other household members, neighborhood, school or workplace within last 28 days. Section 8 is on travel history prior to onset of disease. It helps to identify the place from where the case might have acquired the illness. The arrows show the range of disease specific incubation period and its thick part is most likely period of getting infection. Take complete travel history in each case for their travel during incubation period and write the addresses in the CIF. Based on travel history, the case should be cross notified to the concerned district. Epidemiological field investigation should be done in the cross notified district. The neonatal tetanus case, the district of residence, is the district where child was delivered. Section 9 highlights the health seeking behavior of the patient. In this case, couple of health facilities were visited by the patient on 2nd April and 15 April. All the health providers who did not report the case should be sensitized. The help seeking behavior information helps in identification of all the health facilities which a suspected case may have visited. This information helps in sensitization of health facilities for timely notification of suspected cases as well as reprioritization and expansion of the reporting network. In the section 10, fill in the details of specimen collection. Remember to mention reasons if sample is not collected. In purchases, two nasopharyngeal swabs should be collected within four weeks and serum should be collected till 12 weeks of onset of cough. In diphtheria, two throat swabs should be collected within four weeks of onset of sore throat. No sample has to be collected in neonatal tetanus case as its diagnosis is clinical one. Nasopharyngeal swab and serum samples were collected on 17 April. Samples sent to lab on 18 April. Once lab result is available, DIO or SMO office should share it with patient and health facilities. Active case search in the community is important to identify all the suspected cases, contacts as well as the susceptible for early intervention. The ACS should be done using VPD, ACS format. Important components of ACS are number of individuals verified, number of suspected cases found, number of contacts identified, number of contacts received antibiotics, and number of susceptible vaccinated. In Section 12, DIO or SMO need to update the CIF. With the final classification as laboratory confirmed, epidemiologically linked or clinically compatible, rejected means not fulfilling the case definition of the disease and no IPID number should be allotted to rejected cases. In NNT cases, encircle confirmed NNT if the case fulfills case definition. 60 days follow up in an important aspect of epidemiology to know the outcome or complications. Ensure that all cases of diphtheria, pertussis and neonatal tetanus cases get followed up telephonically after 60 days of onset of illness. Section 14 is the last section. Encircle the complications observed or found at any time during illness or during follow-up for the concerned disease. 
IPID number is a unique ID allotted to all the DPT cases by DIO or SMO office. It is 16-digit alphanumeric unique code. It consists of disease code as DTH, PTS and NNT followed by country code, state code, district code, year of onset and case serial number. Here are examples of IPID numbers generated for the case of diphtheria, pertussis and neonatal tetanus. CIF provides important epidemiological details about the disease. Keep the CIF updated with information as and when available with DIO or SMO office. VPD surveillance helps us to identify the areas with low immunization coverage and to take appropriate public health measures.